So we're going to have a quick look at how we can make a T-list view data for where in a VCL application. So I'm going to go create a blank VCL application here and I'm going to use a client data set just because it's really quick and simple and easy. I haven't got any database to set up. I'm just going to go and use the BioLife samples that ship with Rad Studio. Now first off let's add down some edit controls. I need the, D, the DB edits. So we're going to use the traditional database aware controls. Uh, using the same approach I'm going to show you here, you can actually use a standard um, edit control. Um, but I'm going to stick with the database ones for the moment. And let's add in a DB image as well. Now let's just move these up a little bit and give me a bit of space for the image. Okay, um, obviously you'd probably go ahead and put some labels on so you know what everything is. Uh, but let's go ahead and link these for, we need a data source, to a data source, which will be our client data set. And now we have our data source connected to our data set and the controls connected to the data source. We can go and select the fields that we want to be shown. So let's start with category and then common name and let's make this one length in centimeters and here we've got an image which will link to the graphic field okay so now we have our traditional data aware controls let's mix it up with a non-data aware control but make it data aware using live bindings now visual live bindings were introduced in Rad Studio XE3 and they're a really super cool way to be able to link objects together um, and in this video we're going to show you how to do that now with a data set so I'm just going to take the star which means everything in the client data set link it to the list view and that's just going to keep it in, in sync so when the cursor changes on the data set it's going to update on the list view uh, now next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the list view into report mode and I'm going to change here the category name to be the item caption. Now I do need to go and add a couple of columns in here. So here's the column editor. And let's just go and add a couple of columns and we can see because we have the common name already linked up to the item caption we're now being able to see that in the list view so let's make this a bit wider maybe a hundred and 40 uh, and this one here we can make maybe a little bit wider still 70 so we'll do length here and this one here we're going to call name now I want to group these by the category because there's multiple fish in each category so let's take the data set here and choose category as the index field name in fact we'll do common name as a secondary index on there and I might just to just at design time I might just need to refresh my data set now um, now we can see we've got the item sub item let's hook that to the length in fact we can choose this to be right justified there we are uh, and finally we want to group these so we're going to use the category name and we're just going to link this up to the item header and finally, we need to tell the list view that we want it to be group view. And then we have it. So let's just hide the non-visual controls. And now we can see here we've got our categories, we've got the fish within each category, we've got the length showing. And if we go ahead and run this application, as we select different fish, we can see that they're updating on the data set, if we go ahead and change the length here, let's make this 140 instead, we can see as we leave the control and we validate that entry, it's now updating automatically on the list view as well. So there we are, no lines of code, we've made a non-data aware control, completely data aware using the VCL and live bindings.